Hello. Uh, so I've had some time to think about uh, some things that I've meant to do and haven't gotten around to it. Uh, one of them was recording some simple videos and some of the things I do with uh, stats, metrics, and also just how to use tables. Um, and I thought I'd try and knock some of those out. So next time someone asks me how I do something, I can uh, I can send you this link, and it will save me trying to explain it uh, in typing, which is actually. Uh, a lot less fun and a lot harder to do. So one of the things uh, that I use most often um, is VLOOKUP. And I think it's one of the most important things you can learn if you want to start playing with spreadsheets after you know where to find data, which is actually the most important. Um, I'm starting right from the beginning here. So um, I've got fsstatistics.com loaded up. That's where I'm going to take data from and start manipulating it using um, or reorganizing it uh, using VLOOKUP. So um, you can go to uh, FS Statistics anytime because it's always there for us. Um, thanks to Alice at the Maze Keys. Um, go to the database tab, pick a position, and then just download Steal Like a Thief in His Night. Let's see. Like a Thief in the Night, steal all of his data, which I've done numerous times and he's yet to uh, report me. So I, I, think, uh, I think we're allowed to do it at this point. So. There we go. Um, now, one of the good and bad things <laughs> about downloading the entire database is you get all this information. So I'm just going to limit it to market share just to keep it simple. And um, we could use any of this stuff that he gives us. So I'm going to limit it. To, I'm going to limit it to wide receivers, market share, of targets, receptions, yards, and touchdowns to keep it simple. All right. Okay, so uh, the basic idea here is that we have a whole bunch of data. Now we finally found somewhere to get it from in a nice, safe, clean environment like FS Statistics, and we want to make a new table. We want to actually do some analysis on it. So we're going to use VLOOKUP to reorganize it. I'm going to steal the player names here. Uh, supposedly, you'd have um, names that you're looking for in order to compare or contrast or. Uh, find a pattern in how a player develops, for example. Um, but we are just going to steal the name. So. Alright, so we want to know what players receiving yards were, but with um, 17 years worth of data and over 3,000 rows of it, we don't want to check individually. And sometimes source data can get even larger than that. Um, or we just want to reorganize it in a way that's easier to digest with our purpose in mind. So we type the lookup, open bracket, and it gives us instructions in Excel. All of this stuff works in Google Sheets as well, which is remarkably helpful. But um, I have learned from being self-taught on this stuff that most of this may as well be written in Swahili or Latin or Greek or whichever one you don't read or speak. Um, so here is what they're actually asking. Uh, the first thing it wants, the lookup value, is literally what you're searching for, or whatever variable, number, or in this case, name. Second one, table array, it's just asking you where you want it to search. And we want it to search from the player's name and our source data to yards per reception. And what the hell, I'll assume you've never used a computer before, and the first thing you did was get on YouTube to listen to this, which is a weird decision. I'm holding the shift key, <laughs> right? Uh, just so I can select all the columns I want. Um, now what I'd actually suggest is you just select the whole range. Make sure the first column you're selecting here has the valuable variable you're searching for. Again, the name in this case. But then just select the whole lot because you might want to do more with it later. Take more to start with, um, just in case. Okay, um, so I've selected the whole range. Now with another comma, it's asking us the column index number, which is literally which column do you want, Paula? It just wants to know which one, which value we need. Um, and it's going to do it by numbers, so we have to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We want the eighth column from the name, uh, so we just type in eight. The next one's a true or false variable, uh, which isn't anything to worry about at this point. Just think of it as by saying zero, you're asking it for asking it to search for the exact name, which is uh, important, but also 
comes up later as well. So uh, uh, if you're searching any significant data size, I'd recommend checking at least 10 of those values it returns. Um, but for our purposes, we're just going to check the one because we can trust FS statistics and for the sake of time. So um, is DeAndre Hopkins market share of receiving yards actually 42.04? Yes, it is. Okay. But that's, that's actually a really important step. If you've not done a lot before, make sure you check more than one to make sure it's always returning the correct value and then you can trust the whole column. All right. Few things to point out at this point: cells slip and slide, which is a good thing, um, as you can see. Uh, as you move down the list, this number's changing. Notice a four, a seventeen. That's just making sure it's always searching for the name adjacent to the cell, which is what you told it to do up here. That's a good thing. Unfortunately, notice that the search area is also sliding. So that feature is giving us some problems. See it change B7, B8, B9. Because we actually always want it to search the whole column. We don't want it to return partial results and cause problems later. And the way to lock in a number of variable, variable is actually to insert dollar signs. You get, there's a shortcut if you press um, F4. It locks it in here with these little dollar signs. Make sure you get both sides of it though. And you can actually just press that the first time you select it and it'll do it all for you. Um, but make sure you do that so that it's always searching the area that you want it to. And send it back down the line. See, uh, so that stops changing. All right, that's gonna keep things uh, a lot simpler as we move forward. How far, are we? seven minutes in? Okay, cool. Uh, that, that didn't take too long. Now, obviously we don't just want to search up the receiving yards because uh, FS Statistics was already giving us that, right? It's all, it's all hit. Uh, we were trying to find out what the player's market share receiving yards was at different places or in different variables, whether it's a different season, uh, first, second, or third season, or um, uh, or depending on which team they played for, or in our case, we're going to search for what they did at different ages, which is, a, again, the same thing I did with um, uh, the wide receiver database and the running back database and the co still in college database, all available on um, uh, Google Sheets. And this is basically how I populated it from the raw data as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, it's looking up just the name, but we want it to look at their name at a certain age. So the way I've developed, um, I'm sure it's been done or uh, figured out or found out, or it, maybe there's even a better way, but this is the way I do it. And uh, I call them helper columns, in this case, helper by age. So in the source data, I'm just gonna select the name and their age. And I'm going to lock in that age as well. No, no, not in this one, obviously. And then populate that whole column. So it's telling you how old the player is and who the player is in every one, uh, every row of our helper column. So we no longer want to search just by um, their name. We want to search by their name and their age. That's one way to do it, actually. You can just put an and in there. You can also create an answer column. But, yeah, let's do it this way for now. So we want to search for their name and their age. And we also want to lock in their age on this one because we don't want that column sliding down into the market share numbers, right? And then send it back down. Now you'll notice you get a lot of errors. That's because our search area has changed. We no, wanna, no longer want to search from the player name to the receiving yards. We want to search from our helper column to our receiving yards. So how many columns over is that? It should be 11 because we've added two cells to the search area. Lock them in. And now it's the 11th column we're searching for. Check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, 
Oh, it's 10. I must have taken one out somewhere. I've forgotten about it. Sorry about that. And send it on down the line. So now it's looking up their name at this age in the 10th column. Uh, and again, we can check that. We can actually just turn this into a table at this point. Make it easier to check things. And there he is at age 21. His market share receiving yards was... 21.03, which is incredible actually for any player, but it's returning the right value, which is the main point. All right, now the other thing I really want to show here is, well, there's a couple of things. One, these nasty error message, error messages, you probably don't want that in your table, especially if you're expecting the screenshot. So this is one of the things I like about VLOOKUP, not only simple, it can be used for a variety of purposes, but we can also marry it another formula called if error and it took me a remarkably long time to figure out that saying if an error I just thought it was just a random string of letters so yeah that's mockable I know anyway and um, you're gonna close your original formula off in brackets and then type off if error in front of it and then comma and whatever you want it to return instead of an error message. So if there's an error, you want it to say zero. And not, you know, n slash a, as cool as that sounds. So instead it will return a zero if it doesn't have that data. And again, where it's, you know, we can trust this data set. It's from FS Statistics. I already know it. I've already <laughs> verified it numerous different times. And it's a trustworthy site at this point. So and we can trust that if it's returning an error and also because i took these names from the data source right now if i hadn't have done that if i just typed in these names for example and especially knowing my typing spells do you yeah, i got it right there. And then it might be returning an, a zero, and it looks legitimate after you put in the if, if error code, when actually it's just that I got the name wrong. So it's always worth checking that as, if, you've, if you've got the names from a different source, they could be spelled differently, they could have um, juniors or junior dots, and that can return zero when in fact the data source has data on them. So those things are always worth checking. It's something I've learned after making many, many, many mistakes. All right. And the other thing I want to show you you can do with this um, to populate a table, to fill a table. I don't know why I say fancy word that's populate. Um, is you can slide it if you code the original formula or change it slightly, right? Because I've locked in the age here, it's always going to be returning age 21 but if I unslide the unlock the age by removing those dollar symbols and instead I lock the name then I can slide it over and it starts and it does all of that for me that's easier than copying and pasting and anything else and then I can reverse that on those two individual formulas lock in the age instead of the name and it, I've just found it to be a lot quicker doing it that way uh, than in doing it individually especially when you're actually looking up 20 different values right or six and then you can double click and it does it for each age and again you'd go through and you check you know six to ten ten to twenty depending on how, how big a search you're doing to make sure all these values are returned correctly so you can trust the table and in this case we know we can because again the names came from the same column and also FS statistics is remarkably dependable all right um, and we can we can keep going with that obviously and we could look for age trends for example in market share 
or successful to unsuccessful <laughs> NFL receivers if we were doing that hey stop slide it over and DeAndre Hopkins hasn't played at age 26 27 so uh, we we know they're meant to be returning an error Make sure I'm locking in and unlocking the right ones every time. So on and so forth. There's actually another trick here so you don't have to do them individually, but I'm in it now. It's getting pretty long, so maybe that's enough. A little trick. Pull on video. All right. So now it should be. Yeah, it's locked in the age, and the player is allowed to slide down the column. Da da da. And now you know what every player did at every age in terms of market share or receiving yards. And again, you can then go on and do the receptions or anything else you'll actually planning to look at for your table um 16 minutes there's one other thing i want to show you because it's not because i don't think you know necessarily or that i think it's particularly clever but i find it remarkably useful so if you don't know it or weren't aware of it or weren't sure so i, I want to say i use it a lot and it's fantastic and um, all these formulas are great but if you get your table where you need it to be, like these are the numbers that you want, it can be helpful and also crash your computer a lot less. <laughs> um, uh, if you want to do pivot tables or you want to just start sharing it, organizing it, and if it's big enough, all these formulas can start getting a little awry or they can just crash your computer, like I said, because there's too much going on. So one way to turn these formulas into values, the way that I know and the way I use a lot, it's basically a version of control C, control V, and so copy and paste, but you can do it without using all the, you know, the home insert tabs or getting overly complicated. You can just use it at your keyboard. And that's to select the ones that you want to turn into values instead of formulas. And then you control C just like usual, normal, but then you shift to the shift key. So you push the shift key and then F10. And this little menu pops up which you can just ignore and then press shift and v and it turns it all into the values instead of you know it, it's basically a special paste but um you don't it's right here on the keyboard and it takes three seconds and um, so i found that useful as well uh oh. something else if you don't want it to return zeros Something else um, I figured out is that as long as you put in little quotation marks, you can actually have it. I didn't mention this. Um, have it return any value you want if you put it in quotation marks. All right. I have So it can return again any non numerical thing you want it to say. You can even spell it correctly if you want. Like, I don't know who I had on this. Or anything else. So you can just get it to say that there is no data there or that the data is unknown or did not play at that age you can make it as big or as small as you want um, the important point is that you can have it return non-numerical values if you put it in quotations now it's not just important for vlookup that's not important for vlookup unless you really don't like the look of zeros um, but it becomes really useful um, with some other formulas that I've um, put out there so I'll mention it again but quotation marks mean that you can actually return a non-numerical value in the same formula all right and it works the same when you special paste it it just becomes those letters instead of the formula
all right guys thanks for sticking through it if you did um, this is basically how I populated um, all my databases from the raw data um, market share data so I've used it a lot and it continues to be uh, useful and trustworthy like you might actually stop um, thanks for checking it out question which I assume is why I sent you this link to this video and I will hopefully do other videos that are of interest to someone. Thanks.